So now it goes down really slowly and it takes a while to charge up as well. Welcome back to the second part of the Mobile Endless Runner tutorial series. This video will cover the flashlight setup for the player based on the game Ghost Pop. If you haven't seen the game, check out the first part of the tutorial series. Be sure to support me on Patreon and join my Discord server for extra help learning Unity. So I've imported three sprites that we'll be making use of. There will be a link in the description for these. Now, for the spotlight, we're going to make sure that the texture type is Sprite 2D and UI and the pixels per unit is 256. Make sure you click apply afterwards. For the charge bar, we want to make sure that's also Sprite 2D and UI and the pixels per unit is 16 and apply that. And for the charge bar backing, we want to make sure the pixels per unit is 100 Set the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI and apply that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a canvas. So I'm going to right click UI canvas and I'm going to right click create empty and I'm going to name this my charge bar because we need a bar to charge up and it will go down uh, when the player is using the flashlight but it will charge back up once the player isn't using the flashlight. So under here, I'm going to create a UI image and I can call this uh, charge bar border. Okay. Now for the sprite, I'm just going to set it to the border. Awesome. And if we take a look, this is our canvas, but it is very our charge bar is very small so we're going to move our charge bar up to here and we'll probably move it across and then we'll center it and for the border we need to make that bigger just like this okay okay so it's still a little bit too small so make sure you adjust it around until we get to a nice size so make sure you position the x and y to be zero and zero and we can grab the charge bar itself and just center that. Awesome. And what we can do now is we can duplicate this, but I'm going to call it uh, charge bar back. And we can drag this in. So we've got this and I can change the color to like a gray and we can move it up in the hierarchy. So it will be behind. Now, We'll also need another one of these for the fill. So I'm gonna control duplicate that and I will call it charge bar fill. So charge bar fill, awesome. And I'm gonna set this to like a greeny color. Okay, nice and bright. I'm also gonna make sure that this is behind the border but in front of the charge bar. And for the image type, on the inspector. I'm going to change simple to filled. I'm going to set the fill method to horizontal. So as you can see, if you drag the fill amount, it'll go up and down. Now I'm going to duplicate the backing again and I'm going to call this the charge bar empty. So this is what's going to come up when it becomes empty. So I'm going to change it to like a red. So it's like a sort of warning that the charge bar is empty and I can deactivate that within the inspect. The next thing I want to do is create the player movement itself. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it scripts. And within the scripts folder, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script and I'm going to call this player movement. I just want to open that up. Within here, I'm going to delete the start method because we don't need it. I'm going to create a bunch of variables. Now, since this is a mobile game, we're going to be making use of Unity's touch system. So I'm going to create a private touch. I'm going to call it touch. And then I'm going to create a private vector two. And this is going to be our touch position. Okay, so touch pause. Make sure that has a capital P. And then I'm going to have a private Oops, a private quaternion, and I'm gonna call this rot y, so rotation y. I'm gonna have a private float, which is gonna be our speed modifier, so speed mod equals 0.3f. Lastly, I'm gonna have a private game object called light object, but I'm going to serialize the field so we can drag it in within the inspector, okay? So game object, 
light object. I'm going to make it equal to null to begin with as well before we've dragged anything in. Now, I'm also going to have a public ball and it's going to be called empty charge. I'm going to set that equal to false. And I'm going to have a public static player movement and this is going to be our instance. Now, we only want one of the player movements within a scene. We don't need two players within a game. So we can create this uh, small way to make it singleton. So in our void awake, I can write instance equals this. So every time we call player movement dot instance, we're going to be referencing this particular script. Within our update void, we want to firstly check if our touch count is greater than zero. So I'm going to write if input dot touch count is greater than zero. Within that, I'm going to set our touch variable equal to the first touch that we get. Okay, so input dot get touch. And we're going to get the index zero, so that's the first one. The next thing we want to do is I want to check if our charge is not empty. If not empty charge, then we want to set our light object dot set active to true. So long as we have charge, we're going to set our light object to true, but else we can set our light objects, oops, our light objects set active to false because we don't want to display it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check if our touch phase has moved. So if touch dot phase equals to touch phase dot moved. And it says a finger has moved on the screen. So we're going to check whether our finger has moved on the screen. And if it has, then we're going to grab our rotation y variable and I'm going to make that equal to a quaternion dot Euler. And for the x value, I'm going to have zero. For the y value, I'm going to grab the touches delta position in the x and I'm going to multiply it by our speed modifier. And for the z value, I'm going to keep it at zero and put a semicolon. Next, I'm going to grab the transform dot rotation and I'm going to set it equal to our rotation y multiplied by our transform dot rotation. The last thing we need to do is go to the end of our first if statement. So if our touch count is less than or equal to zero, so else, what we can do is we can set our light object back to false as well because we don't want it moving when we're not touching the green. Awesome, so make sure you save that and we can go back into our project and I'm going to create another script. This is going to be our UI controller. Our UI controller is going to be able to control all of the UI within the game, firstly starting with our charge bar, okay? So create a new script and call it UI controller. What we're firstly going to be needing to use is Unity Engine's UI system. So we're going to be using Unity Engine dot UI. I'm going to delete the start method again. And I'm going to serialize a bunch of fields that we can edit within the inspector. So square bracket, I'm going to go, I'm going to type in serialize field. And I'm going to grab a private image and I'm going to call this charge image. I'm going to make it equal to null. Next, I'm going to serialize field uh, private game object and this is going to be our empty image. I'm going to make that equal to null as well. We also want a time offset so I'm going to serialize field and I can grab a private float time offset. I'm going to set that equal to 2 .f. I'm also going to have a serialized field private float time modifier. This is going to be equal to 4.0f. These are all serialized fields, so we can change these in the editor if we need to. I'm going to have a private float charge value. I'm going to make that equal to 1f. And I'm going to have a public ball using charge and then I'm going to have a public static UI controller 
and that's going to be called instance. Now, since we have an instance of it, I need a void awake. So void awake. And we can set instance equal to this. Within the update method, we need to control the charge itself. So we need to check whether we're using the charge or not. And if we are, then we can change our value, the fill. Okay, we can move it up and down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check if we're using charge. If we are, we're gonna change our charge value equal to mathf.clamp between zero and one. We're gonna grab the charge value. And we're gonna minus our time offset, okay? Multiplied by our time dot delta time. Whoops. Time capital T time dot delta time. Then I'm also gonna grab the charge image and we're gonna set the fill amount equal to our charge value. Else, if we aren't using the charge, okay, we want it to fill back up. So we want it to charge. And to do that, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna copy and paste these. So copy and paste, except I'm gonna change the charge value to add to the time offset by time dot delta time instead of minus it, okay? And then I'm gonna set it to the fill amount again. We also wanna check if our charge value is less than or equal to zero. And if it is, what we can do is we can set the empty image to show the player that there's no charge left. So if our charge value is less than or equal to zero, we can grab our player movement dot instance dot empty charge and we can set that to true now else grab our player movement dot instance dot empty charge and we set that equal to false within the first one we also need to change our empty image and we want to set it to active so set it active to true and we can copy the same thing but we can set it to false instead Save that and we want to go back into the player movement because we want to make use of the UI controller. We want to change the using charge variable of the UI controller based on what's happening with the player movement. If we're getting a touch, we want to go UI controller dot instance and we want to check using charge equal to true. Now I'm going to copy that and within this else statement down the bottom, I'm going to set our using charge to false because we're not touching anymore. Save that and head back on into the editor. So we're going to need a UI controller. So I'm going to create an empty game object. We can reset its value. I'm going to call it UI controller. And I'm going to add the UI controller script to it. So we need to set our charge image. Okay. So that can be our fill, our empty image, Okay, and then we can edit these values as needed. Now, we also need a player, because our game doesn't currently have one. So I'm gonna create another empty game object. I'm gonna reset its value. And underneath this, I'm gonna create a cube. Okay, just so we can have a little bit of visual output. I'm gonna call this player. And within the parent of the cube, we can add our player movement script. The one thing is we need to set our light object, but we don't actually have that. Now within the player, we also need to create the flashlight itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an empty and I'm gonna call this our flashlight parent, okay? And underneath that, I can create another empty game object, except this time I'll just call it the flashlight okay and we can add a sprite renderer to it and for the sprite we want it to be the spotlight and the color we can set it to like a nice yellowy color and we want to position our camera so it's sort of starting to look like the world so where is the camera we'll take it out of 2d and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the camera down maybe 45 degrees and I'm going to drag it up. Now obviously this 
uh, sprite is not positioned correctly. So, what I can do is I can flip it maybe 90 degrees. Might need it to go another 90 degrees as well. Oop. Wrong way. We can drag it to the position we want it to be at. We can make it smaller if we need. So that might be a little too big. And to make it small, we can just edit the pixels per unit, so I can go 128. Whoop. Maybe I can go 512 and that will half its size again. So we've got our flashlight. I need to set it on the player movement, so I'm going to drag it in here. Awesome. The last thing we need to do is test it out. So you can plug your phone in. I'm using an iOS device, okay. So I'm going to go edit project settings. Make sure our device is connected. Okay. Now we've got any iOS device. Awesome. So I've got my iPhone here. And if we click play, should be able to see we've got the game. Now if we try to rotate the player, when we tap on the screen, we've got a flashlight coming up, and as soon as we get empty on the charge, it goes red. But what we can do is we can rotate the player around. Obviously the charge goes down too fast, so we can go into our UI control and change that. We can put it to like maybe 0.5, okay. So now it goes down really slowly. And it takes a while to charge up as well. Now that's good because later on you can use an upgrade. You can change how long it takes to charge up. If you guys enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, support me on Patreon if you can, join the Discord server. I'd just like to thank Benonis and Joshua for this month's Patreon pledges. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.